Step four of Cotter and Cohan's method of change is communicate for buy-in. In this step, the vision and strategy are released to the masses. The direction of change is widely spoken and communicated for both understanding and gut level buy-in. The goal is to get as many people as possible committed to make the vision a reality. This step is more than a data transfer. This is when you need to show the flight something that addresses anxiety about change. This something must accept our anger. This something must be credible in a gut level sense and invokes faith in the vision. Before presenting the vision to the masses, the guiding team should prepare for Q&A after the vision presentation. During the Q&A, there will be some negative feedback and the guiding team must not argue against it but accept it and find ways to deal with it. It is important after the presentation of the vision that the guiding team matches words with deeds. They must work to shorten the destructive breach between actions and words. Okay, here are my two cents. I recommend asking for buy-in from the start in step one, and it should be continuous throughout this process. I mentioned informing leaders in a previous video and their importance of having them on the guiding team. Informant leaders are key to gathering buy-in from the flight because they often influence junior enlisted. They have a better grasp of the emotional pulse of the unit. And informant leaders can be instrumental in selling the vision to the flight. I do caution using informant leaders in this fashion because they will test your leadership abilities. Sometimes section leads are threatened by informant leaders. There will usually be a push-pull relationship between formal leadership authority and the ideas presented by these airmen. Okay, back to Cotter and Cohen. They have a few suggestions which will enable you to accomplish this step. First, keeping communication simple and heartfelt, not complex and technocratic. Second, doing your homework before communicating especially to understand what people are feeling. This is where you can tap in into your informal leaders. Next, speak into anxieties, confusion, anger, and distrust. Next, ridding communication channels of junk so that important messages can get through. Additionally, using technologies to help people see the vision. Here are the actions that will not work. First, under communicating, which happens all the time. Speaking as though you're only transferring information. Accidentally fostering cynicism by not walking the talk. And that concludes step four. Step five of Cotter and Cohan's method of change is empower action. When members of the flight believe in the vision, and are ready to enact towards change, this step requires you to remove the barriers in their path. The word empowerment has a lot of emotional baggage associated with it. For the context of this construct of enacting change, empowerment is not giving people new authority and responsibility. It is about removing barriers. Often, there aren't clear guidelines there is a lack of training and a lack of proper tools accompanying new authority and responsibility to affect change. Therefore, removing barriers is a better use of resources and time. There are several barriers to empowering action for change, and they are called boss, system, mind, and information. These are the barriers you need to remove for your unit to enact change. As I discuss each of these barriers, I will give you my two cents for some of them. The boss barrier is a supervisor within the flight's chain of command who thinks this change is stupid. They often speak out against it and work to disempower change. Cotter and Cohan 
suggest simply removing that person through transferring, demoting, and firing them. So here is my two cents. Yes, if you can move them, then do it. If not, you can try what I've done in the past. If you are engaged with your flight, section leads, and informal leaders, the group should be able to identify these boss barriers during step two, building a guiding team in the change process, and then incorporate them into the guiding team and always ask them for their feedback. The system barrier is the bureaucracy or the layers of rules and procedures which appear to disempower change. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. Often there is an outdated interpretation of the regulation that prevents change. My advice is to become very familiar with the AFIs and nurture a relationship with your reps at the MASHCOM. Many portions in the AFI grant squadron, group, and wing commanders authority for certain actions and provide waivers. Second, your MASHCOM rep might be able to provide an alternative interpretation of the regulation to break down this barrier. The mind barrier is the feeling within individuals that they are incapable of leaping towards change. They internalize the negative feelings associated with change and just don't think they can do it. These people need a personal touch and the guiding team needs to help them see the possibilities to assist them in generating a feeling of faith and to change behavior. The information barrier is the lack of feedback or the lack of information. Information is an important tool for enacting change. Receiving feedback on what is working and what is not it always allows for adjustment. The guiding team needs to receive feedback on their actions as well as feedback from self-reflection. Cotter and Cohan have a few suggestions which will enable you to accomplish this task. First, finding individuals with change experience who can bolster people's self-confidence with we can do this accolades. And these folks should be on your guiding team as well. Second, recognition and award systems that inspire, promote optimism, and build self-confidence. Additionally, feedback that can help people make better vision-related decisions. Lastly, retooling disempowerment supervisors by giving them new responsibility that clarify, show the need for change. Here are the things that do not work. Ignoring bosses who seriously disempower their subordinates. Solving the boss problem by taking away their power and giving it to their subordinates. Trying to remove all the barriers at once. And lastly, giving it into your own pessimism and fears.